on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, a property of Learfield Sports. Touchdown, Alabama! Live from Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, this is Hey Coach. Presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Hey Coach is brought to you by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide. Your Alabama Ford dealers, Alabama Saturdays, built Ford Tough. Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. And by Coke Zero, real Coke taste, zero calories. Here is your host, Tom Roberts. Good evening, everybody. Roll Tide. There you go. Welcome to Bob's Victory Grill here in Tuscaloosa. The Hey Coach presented by Alpha Insurance. Back on track. That's our seventh-ranked Alabama football team. After a very hard-fought 14-13 win at Arkansas, we're finally back at home to play a game Saturday against Texas A&M. In 30 minutes, Coach Nick Saban will join us to talk about that game. Also, to answer your questions, if you're here at Bob's, Find Jessica Weiger. She has the microphone. She'll be right here at the corner of the bar. And if you're sitting there at home, want to ask a question, call 877-202-BAMA. And by the way, Terry Saban and our local affiliates, 99.1, Tide 99.1, and the Bear 95.3, want to send you to Saturday's game. They're auctioning off a silent auction for four Southfield Suite tickets to the game, as well as parking at the Coliseum and pregame field access. If you're here at Bob's, just go see Trey and Ben, and they're from the radio stations. They're at a table for Nick's kids. That's where all the proceeds go. If you're sitting there at home and want to bid in the auction, call 205-339-4953. That's 205-339-4953. we got a bunch of special guests here tonight. One I want to recognize again. We did it a few minutes ago. The... Uh, Probably the oldest living letterman we have here at Alabama from the 1940s. Don Sauls is with us. Don, good to see you. And we also have Johnny Nicola and several members of the Bridgeport, Pennsylvania, Bama Boosters Club. Glad to have you guys with us as well. Now, we've got a lot to do over the course of the next 30 minutes before the coach gets here. We're going to talk about hoops on the quad, which is uh, presented by Alabama Power. It starts at 11 o'clock Saturday morning. Uh, over on the quad. Coach Grant's going to join us for that. Todd Bramble has just arrived here at the restaurant. He should be beaming after a big, big win on the road last Thursday night at LSU. We'll talk about uh, soccer and volleyball. And Pat Murphy is going to join us on the phone as well. So a lot to do. We invite you to take part in the show as well. And we're going to start by talking Bama soccer next. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Hey, Alabama fans, Academy Sports and Outdoors is the place to go when you need the gear to support your team. Academy is your one-stop shop for Crimson Tide jerseys, T-shirts, caps, novelty items, and more at everyday low prices. Be sure to visit your local Academy store or academy.com to stock up on Crimson Tide gear for the season. Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sponsor of the Alabama Crimson Tide. The right stuff, the low price, every day. Academy. Nothing means it's game day like ice cold Coke Zero, because zero means it's game day. What about when? No. But you don't even know what I was going to say. Were you going to say zero means it's game day, so therefore nothing means it's game day like Coke Zero? No, but... Then it doesn't matter, does it? The refreshing taste of Coke Zero. Zero means it's game day. Hey, this is Coach Nick Zabin. Like you, Coke Zero is a proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. So when you're enjoying the game this season, feel free to crack open a Coke Zero and enjoy that too. Roll Tide. Ready for this week's game? We're talking the rumbling roar of Big Al and another epic Roll Tide. But we're also talking Great Pizza. As a proud sponsor of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Red Baron Pizza is kicking off your game day at tailgateatyourplace.com. Score big with awesome party ideas, winning recipes, and impressive school trivia. Plus, a chance to win over $150,000 in prizes. Red Baron, Roll Tide. Before you get in, get going, get gone, you need to get a tire that gets you. We suggest a Cooper tire. After all, Cooper engineers its tires not just for performance, but real life performance. Because life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. 
Buy four qualifying Cooper tires and get up to a $70 prepaid card by mail. Visit a participating Cooper Tire retailer or coopertirerebates.com for reward forms and official terms and conditions. Think it's only a game? You win some, lose some. Just give the old college try. Not around here. Because in Tuscaloosa, winning on the field and the work site isn't everything. It's the only thing. Alabama and the 2014 Ford F-150. This team, this truck will make a believer out of you. For great offers on a new F-150, go to shopfordnow.com or see your local Ford dealer today. Welcome back to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha Insurance. Joining us on the stage, head coach of the Alabama soccer team, Todd Bramble. And Todd, I got to tell you, last Thursday at this time, we were watching your team on the SEC Network playing at LSU. When we went off the air at 8 o'clock, things didn't look good. But your ladies just wouldn't quit, would they? Yeah, that was a great example of a team that showed tremendous resilience uh, throughout the night. We were down a goal twice in the game and even into the last minute uh, before we got the tying goal and uh, won it in overtime. So it was a lot of drama, but I was really proud of the uh, performance of the team that night. And a very big win, a milestone win, really, for the program, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't know it until after the game, but uh, it, uh, we hadn't beaten LSU in the last eight games uh, that we played against them. So it's been a couple of those wins for, for this team this year and for the program, and uh, it's you know something that I'm really uh, pleased that the players get to uh, get some of that validation for all the hard work that they've put in. Teresa Diedrich getting the winning goal. It's got to be satisfying for you to see a senior in the program getting the winner like that. Yeah, she's been through a lot, and uh, I'm really, really happy that she's uh, feeling that success. Uh, she's, uh, you know, a wonderful person that uh, does a lot for us on the field. It's, it's easy to, you know, come to one of our games and see how talented of a player she is. But what people don't see is what she does behind the scenes yeah. and what she does in the community, in the classroom. And she's just really well-rounded, and uh, I'm really happy for the senior, the senior season she's having. All right, this weekend, you are wearing the pink shirt tonight. The Power of Pink match tomorrow night promoting breast cancer awareness in Arkansas coming to town. They're pretty good, aren't they? They are good. Uh, they went to the third round of the NCAA tournament last year, uh, so their program has some momentum right now. They're one point ahead of us in the standings, uh, so this game has a lot of implications. Well, and it is the Power of Pink match. Anything else going on tomorrow night as far as fans are concerned? Well, I, you know, I think it's uh, in, in addition to that, uh, they'll see our, our team out there in our pink uniforms, uh, you know, trying to raise awareness for uh, breast cancer and the fight against that. And it's Laura Lee Smith, that's her senior night, and that's another uh -huh. senior who's having a great year, and she's just been a wonderful ambassador uh, for this university. Uh, she's already been accepted to med school. She's an outstanding student, and, uh, you know, I'd love the, the fans to come out and show their appreciation for the career that Laura Lee's had for us. It would be nice to see everybody out tomorrow night because it's only one match at home this weekend. The SEC doing odd things this year, it seems like, splitting up uh, the schedule. You, uh, Saturday morning, want to head off to the airport and go to Missouri. Sunday, we're actually going to go really? uh, on the same day. We're going to go up, uh, flap, and play the game on the same day. But it's, a, it's odd that it's a split weekend where we play once at home and once away. But we've got the better end of it because Missouri yeah. is actually playing at Georgia on Friday night. So they've got to travel back home for their home game. So, uh, you know, I think we get the better end of that travel deal. And ordinarily, you would say that it's a, a road match. And so, hey, maybe not so good because they're undefeated at home, but you guys have won three straight on the road. That's pretty incredible. We have, uh, this, this team has shown tremendous uh, mental toughness and emotional toughness playing in some tough road uh, environments. So, you know, we're fully confident that we can go out there and get another result this weekend. Well, I hope so. Good luck to you. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, you look good in pink. Thanks. I'm good not to supposed here. to say that, I guess, but... Uh, Appreciate it, and good luck against the Hogs and the Tigers. Thank you. Roll Tide. Todd Bramble, head coach of the Alabama soccer team, 7 o'clock tomorrow night at the Bama Soccer Stadium. Now then, also in town this weekend, the Alabama softball team playing its annual fall brawl. Crimson Tide last weekend swept a uh, doubleheader from uh, the Middle Tennessee. And then this weekend, the Tide will take on Mobile College. That's going to be a 2 o'clock start on Sunday afternoon at Road Stadium. The uh, Tide softball team, a lot of freshmen, and hopefully we'll hook up with Pat in a moment or so on the Academy Sports and Outdoors hotline. Murph, how you doing on this Thursday evening? Hey, Tom, doing great. I, I want to talk about the freshmen because I think that's what folks should come out and see this weekend. you got a ton of first-year players who are going to make their mark, aren't they? Yeah, we have... Um 
I guess you'll have to start with the pitcher, Alexis Osorio from uh, Riverside, California. She was one of the best kids in the country all summer, and I think she's, I think she's going to be really, really good. I think you're going to like her. She reminds us a little bit of uh, Kelsey Dunn with her, her movement. Wow. Uh, but she's very, very composed, competitive, and just a kind of a bulldog. Um, Demi Turner is a shortstop from Texas. She's about 5'5". Five, five. She throws right, hits left, very, very fast. She's got really good short game, but she can also hit for power. So um, she's another kid that you didn't really have um, a good time watching. And then Kerrigan Fain is a catcher from Gardendale, Alabama. And she was uh, two for two in her start last weekend. And she's going to provide a lot of uh, support behind the plate for Chauncey Bell and the other kids that we have catching. So I think we've got a really good freshman class. Well, a great freshman class, but you got some returning players who are, are going to make their mark. And Leslie Jury, for instance, pitched a shutout in, the, I guess, the opener last week against Middle Tennessee. She improved over last year? Oh, yeah, I think so. And, you know, one of the goals for the fall was if we were going to miss, we're going to miss on the right side of the plate, not down the middle. And then our misses were going to be very, very small. And I think she did that. We, I, don't, I don't know if we had a walk all weekend. Um, Leslie didn't have any. She struck out six. Um, she looked very good. City Little John, again, she didn't have a walk. And then Alexis Osorio picked six innings, and she only gave up two hits. Wow. Um, so I think between the three of them, we're going to have a really good pitching staff. And you must have hit well, too, because you run-ruled uh, Middle Tennessee in both games. Who, who really had a good, uh, good weekend at the plate? Well, I, I think you probably have to start with Chandler Dare, who's a local product from ACA. She uh, continued where, you know, she left off from the Netherlands this summer. She was our best hitter in Amsterdam. She had a uh, flat single and then hit a home run over the right center field fence. Uh, Dan Danielle Richard also hit a home run. Uh, Jaden Spencer, she hit a home run, having several RBIs. So I think this lineup, you know, I've said this over and over to you for probably the last 10 years. Yeah. But this might be the most um, talent we've ever had on a roster. And literally, I could start, you know, 18 different kids all the time, and I think we'd be okay. So well, it, for me to write a lineup, it's going to be a difficult thing. <laughs> well, that's what the fall brawl's for. You can do all kinds of uh, lineup combinations. It'll be 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon against Mobile College. Just a single game, Murph? A uh, doubleheader. A doubleheader. Okay. Well, good yep. deal. That's at Rhodes Stadium Sunday afternoon at 2. Murph, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Pat Murphy joining us on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Hotline talking about Alabama softball in the middle of its fall brawl schedule. There are other things coming up this weekend as well, including hoops on the quad. We'll tell you all about that. But uh, a reminder for you to download the official Alabama Game Day app and get every digital football game day program free of charge. It's easy. Just search for Alabama Game Day from your app store and update for each game. Download now the official Alabama Game Day app presented by Adobe DPS, your best way to mobilize the tide. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Dear John, I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious, and I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to when you checked on me? I don't want to leave, but remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range today. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Chances are there'll never be an emergency ever again. But just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. Who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Well, this is great. <laughs> I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. 
Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency, who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Okay, kids, who remembers where we're all going to meet in case of an emergency? Grand Central Station. Times Square. Higher ground. Where's that? The mountains, son. But we live in the city. Good point. What about supplies? Your mom has all those canned beets somewhere in the apartment. What about water? We have a few gallons stored in the basement. We don't have a basement. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search ReadyKids at NYC.gov or call 311. Brought to you by the New York City Office of Emergency Management and the Ad Council. Total this car. I was talking. Welcome back to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. We're live at Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa. And joining us on stage, head coach of the Alabama men's basketball team, Anthony Grant. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Tom. Good to see you guys. Well, you've been Thank at you. practice uh, for a few days now. Uh, your guys looking pretty good? Yeah, we've had, uh, the, today was our ninth practice, you know, so uh, I think uh, the understanding of what we've got to do, uh, they're starting to get it. You know, I think we've got a, you know, a nice nucleus of young guys that have been being indoctrinated to college yeah. basketball, so uh, I think our, our older guys are doing a good job of helping those guys along and teaching them, you know, what you try to do at this, this point of year is you try to get your system in as much as you can, so we've been able to do some things from a defensive standpoint with our different presses and you know man to man and a little bit of zone and then offensively uh, trying to put some system stuff in that I mean, we worked on a little bit this summer that was a good thing about having a little bit of time yeah. that we had this summer so they're getting they're getting more familiar with it now is uh, trying to get to the point where we're ready to play is the defensive part of the game the toughest for you to coach and convince especially those young guys that they got to play there first well so many different components of it you know yeah. you talk about your half court defense you talk about the uh, you know, just transition defense and then the different presses that we run. So there's a lot of learning that takes place this time of year. And then, you know, on top of that, uh, just the effort and intensity that you got to play with, uh, you know, that always requires a little bit more time. Isn't it nice to have a guy like Levi Randolph, a guy like Ricky Tarrant, yeah. to kind of be the role models for that? Yeah, you know, and that's where we're fortunate. You know, you've got guys like, like Levi and Rodney Cooper, uh, Retin Obasahan, uh, that are veteran guys in your system. Those guys have been with us for, for three years now, you know, so they, they know our terminology, they know the expectations. Uh, and then also a guy like Ricky and Michael Kessens, those guys are veterans in terms of having yeah. played college basketball and understanding what it's about. And then Shannon Hale and Jimmy Taylor got great experience last year. So I like the nucleus of, of veterans that we have coming back mixed in with those four freshmen. I would think that uh, your guys are excited about something that's going to happen Saturday morning at 11 on the quad, hoops on the quad, presented by Alabama Power. It's going to be a fun thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, our guys are really excited, you know, and I think uh, our, our marketing department has done a great job of getting it organized and put together. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, you know, a guy like Levi Randolph and Retin Obasahan, those guys have been wanting to do something like this, you know, for years. So I'm really happy for them. Uh, I, I think they're really uh, excited about the opportunity to get out there and you know the women's team and, and our team will be out there together and be able to, to, to get the excitement going for basketball and, and sort of uh, used to be the kickoff to the college yeah, basketball exactly. season. Obviously now we've had our, our nine practices so uh, we're already in the thick of it but get the fans familiar with our, with our players, get them uh, learn a little bit more about them so I think it'll be a great day. There'll be uh, some contests, like three-point shooting, I would assume? I think, yeah, I think we've got some contests planned, uh, just some, uh, some different fun things. I think there'll be uh, fan involvement, things that the fans can participate in, uh, things uh, I think our guys will be able to, to have fun. It, it won't be uh, necessarily a, a practice, but it'll be more no. of a showcase uh, and a fun event, I think, for, for everybody to come and and see our team and learn more about our guys and have fun in the process. Well, in the case of your team and Christy Curry's Bama women as well, lots of new folks. So the, that I guess that'll be the first order of business is to introduce all the players to the fans. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, obviously, you know, with four new freshmen and then, uh, you know, two guys that didn't play last year right. that, that were on the roster and Ricky Tarrant and Michael Kesson. So that's six new faces that our fans will get familiar with. And, you know, these guys have great personalities. And I know... Uh, you know, there's some things that are planned. I don't want to give away the event, but there's some things that will be planned that will bring out some of their personalities. Wonderful. And, and uh, you know, they'll be able to, to show a different side of them than maybe you see, you know, when they're competing out there on the court. So it should be a fun event. Well, good deal. It starts at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. I, as I dis determined, it's the northeast corner of the quad. Bottom line, if you're facing Denny Chimes from University Boulevard, go to the right. 
The full basketball court's going to be set up. Ought to be a lot of fun. It should be. You know, our guys are really excited about it. And, again, you can't miss it because there'll be a basketball court <laughs> on the quad. Just listen for the balls bouncing, and it should be a great time. It should be. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. Anthony Grant, head coach of the Alabama basketball team, 11 o'clock Saturday morning. Hoops on the quad presented by Alabama Power. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Insurance is simply being prepared. Security. To cover the what ifs. I'm there to help protect my families. You want to protect everything you've worked for. The people that I deal with purchase insurance because they love somebody. I think of insurance as being a promise. That I'm going to be there when you need me. I'm giving them a promise that if they have a loss, I'm going to be there. That's the Alpha way. That's what we do. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Once in a while, a player comes along and completely changes the game. Unbelievable catch! It's no different when it comes to a car. A car that doesn't just change the game, but dominates it. The unrivaled 2015 Toyota Camry. Now get 0% APR for 36 months on a new 2015 Toyota Camry. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid October 1st through November 3rd, 2014. Zero down with approved credit. Monthly payment for every 1,000 finance is 27.78. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and other fees. Cannot combine with other offers. Do game day right. With LG, it's all possible. LG Home Appliances are right in step with your busy world. The largest capacity washer in its class saves you up to 20 minutes per load, even on larger loads. LG's door and door refrigerators offer instant access to gotta have snacks. And with LG Easy Clean, you've got a sparkling oven in minutes. Come check out the latest in LG innovations at your local Best Buy or online at bestbuy.com slash LG. Four years ago, the national economy was draining hope from Alabama. Over 9% unemployment with no business growth. There is never freedom for the breadwinner who is dependent on the government. Governor Bentley focused on creating jobs. We will put Alabama back to work. Airbus has announced the opening of a new assembly plant. Remington is announcing plans to open a large new plant in Alabama. This is becoming standard fare, another major company announcing a move to Alabama. Since Governor Bentley first took office, 40,000 jobs have been created. 60,000 more jobs are on their way. Unemployment is down over 20%, and the business confidence and hiring index is the highest since 2006. But the real credit goes to the hardworking men and women of Alabama. When Alabama is at full employment, it will mean that along with a job, we have restored hope and purpose to thousands of fellow citizens. Governor Bentley, working for Alabama. Paid for by Bentley for Governor, P.O. Box 5047, Montgomery, Alabama, 36103. Welcome back to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha, live at Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa. And it's time to take a look at our Cooper Tire Performance of the Week, presented by Cooper Tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Visit coopertire.com to find your local Cooper Tire dealer. Our Performance of the Week is Bama's freshman punter, J.K. Scott. He had an incredible day up at uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, 44 yards on eight punts, no returns whatsoever. He was named the Ray Guy Award National Punter of the Week. So congratulations to J.K. Scott, our Cooper Tire Performance of the Week. Time to take a look at uh, Crimson Tide Tailgate Tradition brought to you by Red Baron Pizza. Tradition here at home for all the home games is honorary captains, and we've got three great ones coming in this weekend. First of all, the guy who hosts us every week here at Bob's Victory Grill, Grill that's going to be Bob Baumhauer. His nephew, Evan Mathis, who's having a great pro career, is going to be there as well. And then D'Amico Ryan. So we've got three great ones coming in Saturday as honorary captains for the Alabama-Texas A&M game. Bob Baumhauer, Evan Mathis, and D'Amico Ryan. This Crimson Tide tailgate tradition brought to you by Red Baron Pizza. Visit tailgateatyourplace.com for great game day ideas and enter for a chance to win $150,000 in prizes from Red Baron Pizza. You know, it pays to be a Crimson Tide fan with Best Western of Alabama. Whether you're traveling for work or play, get up to 20% off rates and a chance to win a $100 travel card this fall. Visit bestwesternalabama.com slash roll tide. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports.
Toyota Materials Handling of Alabama is the authorized dealer for Toyota forklifts, the world's number one forklift manufacturer right here in the USA. Toyota Materials Handling has short and long-term rentals available ranging from 3 to 36,000 pounds, and they provide parts and service for any model forklift. Ask Toyota Materials Handling about their no-hidden-fees guarantee and service loaner program. Call Toyota Materials Handling of Alabama today and speak with their consultants. Call toll-free 866-957-2250 or go online to toyotamaterials.com. Tide fans make University Mall part of your football weekend game plan. Avoid the campus traffic. Take the Tuscaloosa Charter Tide Ride from University Mall to Bryant Denny and back for just $10. While you're here, enjoy great shopping, dining, the area's best selection of Bama fan gear, and special Crimson Weekend Savings. We're West Alabama's in place to shop for over 30 years. That's University Mall. Roll Tide. The tide will be rolling soon, but if you haven't gotten your Bama Banking Visa check card, you're not really ready for kickoff. Bama Banking, exclusively from BBVA Compass, is the perfect way to show your pride in the tide. Call 1-800-COMPASS or go online at bbvacompass.com slash Bama. Bama builds champions. At BBVA Compass, you can be a champion, too, by sporting one of our limited edition Bama Banking check cards. Sign up for Bama Banking and show your pride every time you use your check card. Call 1-800-COMPASS or go online at bbvacompass.com slash Bama. That splashing you hear, that's Cletus. He makes a living towing steamboats up and down the Mississippi. Not with a boat, but with his brawn. Smith & Forge Hard Cider is a lot like Cletus here. Strong, sturdy, but not too sweet. Cletus, put down that lighthouse. Built from apples, built to refresh. Smith & Forge Hard Cider, made strong. Now available in draft, so saddle up to your favorite tavern and enjoy a tankard. Uncharted Cider Company, Memphis, Tennessee. Please enjoy our ciders responsibly. Yep. Welcome back to Hey Coach, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Every week we have a media guest on the Nick Saban Show, and she has joined us here on stage, Allie LaForce, CBS sideline reporter. Welcome to Tuscaloosa. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. I think you're going to have a fun football game Saturday. I'll be surprised if you don't. I mean, the SEC has not let us down yet, and it normally doesn't. Every year, how do we top it? And somehow, the SEC finds a way. We'll talk a lot about the ball game as we go through the next hour with the coach. i got to ask you, you're a native of Ohio, and your family, I guess athletic genes kind of run in the family, right? They do. Actually, my mom, she played tennis at Kent State, so she's a big Nick Saban fan herself. Yeah. They're both golden flashes, and my dad... Uh, played Division Three football for Wittenberg and won a national championship there. My brother also played Division Three, and he has a national championship ring, too. So it's, it's not Alabama, but we certainly love football. Well, I, I don't blame you, and you love basketball. You played at Ohio? I did. Nice. Yeah, I walked on at Ohio University, so basketball is definitely my first love, but uh, you can't beat football, that's for sure. Well, all right, relax for a minute. The head coach of the Crimson Tide will join us shortly. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. We'll get to our first phone caller in just a few moments. Brought to you by Alabama 811. Be safe. Always call 811 before you dig. It's free. It's the law. Utility companies will come out, locate, and mark buried lines. Call 811. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent, one in 260,000. The odds of him having 15 career NASCAR victories, one in 1.7 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, one in 68. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. It's kind of like an elephant is on my chest. I feel like I'm choking. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. I feel like a fish with no water. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. 
I'm John, a volunteer at United Way. I'm here at Lincoln Elementary School to find out what this place needs. Who knows better about what kids need than kids, right? Let's ask them. Monsters! Lasers! A pool! Another guinea pig! More lasers! Sprinkles! I was thinking more spinach at lunchtime and maybe more exercise. Nah. Nuh uh. Lasers are cool. When it comes to creating healthier communities, what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Because great things happen when we live united. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. My name is Dale Pazinski, and this is how I live united. I volunteer with United Way, helping the homeless in my community by teaching computer skills and helping them build a basic resume to save on their very own USB drive. It's huge when somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Live from Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, this is the Nick Saban Show. Presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Also brought to you by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide. Your Alabama Ford dealers. Alabama Saturdays. Built Ford Tough. Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. And by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Now, with Coach Nick Saban, here's Tom Roberts. Thank you very much. And joining us on stage, the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban. Coach, been a pretty good week for you? Been a good week, you know, and the players were really good today. So we had a really good Thursday practice, which, um, you know, usually when you have good mental intensity on Thursday practice, that means the players are kind of looking forward to playing the game. Well, no Marcus Spears sitting between us tonight, but a, a, a nice-looking lady named Allie LaForce, who's the CBS sideline reporter. And Allie, you're the media guest, so you get to ask the coach the first question. I do? Okay, well, I thought I'd start out with something really hard, you know. How, how many oatmeal cream pies did you eat today? Just two. Just two? Okay, I didn't know if you'd branched <laughs> out every once in a while. <laughs> I always hit my two in the morning. That's always it. get the two in the morning. You know, so many people talk about the high-powered Alabama offense because that's what it's been, and that's how you started out the season. But the last couple of games have been, you know, really defensive-based games, and Texas A&M has had similar outcomes their last two. Uh, what's the key tomorrow in sparking the offense to get back where you started? Well, you know, I think, you know, what our offense needs to do is, I, I think since the Florida game, you know, I think what happens is, you know, guys start – they really focus on the process of what they have to do to be successful. And then all of a sudden when they have success, they start focusing on making plays. But what they forget is the very thing that helped them make the plays that they were making was their focus on executing and doing the little things right. So, you know, we have guys now that I think are pressing, you know, to make plays and not focusing on the little things that you need to do so that you can execute uh, and that starts in the offensive line. It's also the quarterback sometimes. Sometimes it's the receivers. So they don't have the same patience in terms of the execution that we got early in the season. And I think it, it really affects us. And, you know, when, when you put pressure on yourself I, and you let other people sort of evaluate you and determine who you are, you know, it's not about what they think. It's not about what somebody else thinks. It's really about what you are who you are, you know, and you make you what you are. A lot of times, you know, we all make the mistake that we say, you know, I really, she makes me mad. Coach makes me mad. Uh, I lost my money because of the economy. You know, we got all these reasons and we have all these evaluations and uh, the people really think I'm a good player now, so I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and I got to make all these plays. So the expectation all of a sudden and the reality of what it takes to create it aren't the same. And it really affects people's ability to focus and, and do things. And then they get frustrated when they don't have success. And I think we've had a lot of that going on on offense. First of all, it's been more difficult for us to play on offense on the road. Uh, and we played against a much better defensive teams than what we've been playing against. And the players got frustrated because they just didn't make a whole bunch of explosive plays and everything didn't happen fast. And everybody started saying, well, I got to do something different. Well, no, you just got to keep doing the same stuff. It's just going to be a little bit harder, all right, for you to have success, um, you, you know, when you play against better teams. So we've really tried to get our offensive players to focus on what do you have to do 
to execute. You know, it's not about what somebody else thinks. It's not about some expectation you've created for yourself because of the success you've had. It's you make you by what you do. Nobody else makes you. You make you by what you do. And you need to focus on the things you need to do to execute. Don't worry, need to worry about what everybody else thinks. Um, and, you know, here, here's a good example. If I'm playing quarterback and I say, I got to make a play, just like if I was a basketball player and I came across, and if anybody's ever played these games, you know, come across midcourt and say, I'm shooting this time. If you say that, your chances of taking a bad shot just went way up. Because you should say, I'm going to go execute the offense and we're going to get a good shot. Well, that mindset kind of gets you, you know, when you do that. Because then you force things. And if I'm a quarterback and I say, I've got to make a play. All right, well, my first read is right here. He's open, throw him the ball. But I don't do that because I want to make a bigger play. Well, then the bigger play is not there. Then I've got to start scrambling around and something bad happens. All right, same thing with the running back. I want to make a big play. Well, how about just pressing the hole, reading it, taking care of the ball, take what's there, and we'll have positive things happen. So we, we, we've had a little bit of that. You know, too much anxiety, not enough focus on the process of what we need to do. Uh, and I think we really worked hard this week to try to get our players and coaches back to this is what we need to do. I mean, even our coaches, you know, they, th their job is to help the players play their best. You know, they can't get affected by, I think we have to get 550 yards a game and score 45 points. You've got to take what the defense gives you and you've got to focus on the execution and the plan so that we can do a good job with our players. So that's really been what we've been trying to focus on to get guys back to the basics and hopefully it'll work for us and we'll do a better job this, 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 in this game this weekend. All right, Allie, if you've got other questions, just feel free to jump in at any time. Right now, let's go to our best seat in the house. Frank and Erlene Bentley from Alpharetta, Georgia. Frank, you got the first question there? Uh, yes. Hey, Coach. Uh, with uh, both defenses playing so well last week in Arkansas, how important was it to have a punter like J.K. Scott to help flip the field position? Well, I don't, I, you know, J.K. Scott's kind of an unsung hero in some ways on our team because he has really punted well all year. Uh, his first punt as a college player was 60 yards against West Virginia and yep. really changed the field position. And he really did it all day in this game. Uh, and his punting to change field position was probably, when you're playing defense and it's a defensive game, bad weather, lots of not good things happening uh, offensively, to have good field position is really, really important. And uh, we, did, we, we made a lot of miscues in special teams that cost us field position. I, but A.J. made up for that in a lot of ways with a lot of great punts uh, inside the 20. Uh, and when we needed to change field position, he hit a 58-yarder. So uh, he did a fantastic job in the game. And it was very, very important, you know, in the game. Right now, J.K. leading the SEC in punting, almost 47 yards a kick, only two returns all season long for a total of eight yards. Coach, that's amazing in its own right. Well, and it's going to be really important, you know, this week because they have really three good returners, yeah. three guys that are very capable, like 15-plus yard average returns and a uh, very skilled team, you know, that we're playing with lots of team speed. So it's going to be really important that we punt the ball with good hang time uh, direction kick it so we get our coverage units in the right place and our guys are going to have to do a great job of you know pressing the ball and leveraging the ball once we get down there our alabama 811 first caller as usual from grand bay alabama peewee's on the line roll tide peewee how you doing doing great Tom. peewee what's up buddy uh, just enjoyed a wonderful day outside coach i hope uh, everybody did uh, really just loving this weather uh, Coach, I just want to make a little statement here real quick uh, before I ask you a question. You know, last week's game, uh, the biggest thing that I noticed, you know, we made a, a ton of mistakes. But every time that we did make a mistake, when that player or that group of, of personnel came off the field, you know, I saw all kinds of guys from on the sideline coming over, talking to these guys, encouraging these guys, Hey, man, let that go. Let's, let's focus on the next one. And that went on throughout the entire day. And then afterwards, when Landon made his interception at the end of the game, I saw a sideline that erupted 
like I have not seen since the final drive against LSU two years ago on the screen pass play to T.J. Yeldon. Uh, I like when I see that kind of stuff. I, I know you do as well. But, you know, I, I just that was something that, that I really thought that I have not seen all year this year. And my question is, is now that that, that has happened, how is that carried, that attitude of the players, how is that carried over this week into everything they do, not just practice on the field, but their attention in the film room and everything else that's associated with it? Well, you know, Pee Wee, it's interesting that you make some of the comments, and I certainly appreciate them because um, this is why I got a little upset Monday, you know, in the press conference uh, is because, you know, our players really played hard in the game. Uh, it was ugly at times. We made a lot of mistakes. I, but the players really played hard and they competed and there was more togetherness with our team uh, on the sidelines in the game, more people helping each other, encouraging each other, uh, fighting through tremendous adversity, a lot of which that we created ourselves and the mistakes that we made. But go play the next play and keep competing, keep playing and play with tremendous intangibles to win this game. And then to come home to nothing but a bunch of negatives because we only won the game 14-13 just really kind of upset me because it was the first time that I saw our players just go play yep. and play harder than the other team. And, you know, it's kind of like the movie Secretariat. I'm sure a lot of people out there have seen the movie. You know, Jay told me, Jay Sewell, you know, we talked about this today. He told his golf team this last year. You got all these guys that have this high expectation. They won the national championship before. You know, we have these high expectations all the time for what we're supposed to accomplish as a team. Uh, and these people that own Secretariat, this lady, had to win the Triple Crown or she's going to lose everything she has, everything in the world that she has. So she puts it all on this horse. So then the Belmont comes. They're worried sick. All the anxiety that they have, everybody's worried sick. She finally goes and hugs them and looks them in the eye or whatever she does, and she says, just let them run. That's the, the most important line. statement in the whole movie. Just let them run. Run. Wins the Belmont by 31 lengths. That's what I'm trying to get our team to do. Just go run. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Don't worry about all these expectations. Just, just kind of go play. That's what I've been talking about here. And, and they did. They did. And they did it ugly. And I got upset that people didn't, more people didn't realize what Pee Wee realized in terms of how they competed, how they came together, and how they, they really supported and helped each other in the game which I was so happy after that game because of that, and I'm just sorry that more people didn't realize that. It was and a, it's very important to being successful because if your team doesn't have the right intangibles, yep. you, you really have a hard time achieving and being an overachieving team, which is what we want to be. It's all about heart. We've got more questions to come for Coach Saban. Right now we need to take a quick break. And by the way, Terry Saban and the uh, Tuscaloosa affiliates have uh, teamed up to offer you a chance to bid on and win four field suite tickets to the Texas A&M game Saturday, plus a parking pass and sideline access before the game. The uh, silent auction being conducted here at Bob's Victory Grill, or you can call in a bid at 205-339-4953. Best of all, all the proceeds go to Nick's Kids. And those proceeds go to help kids, a lot of kids, you know, a lot. I mean, Miss Terry has done a lot. We've done a lot. We want to continue to do a lot. A lot of people support Nick's kids, and we appreciate that. But uh, helping young people have a better chance to be successful is really important to us. That's what it's all about. Trey and Ben from 99.1 and the Bear are at a table. Mark Nick's kids. And again, the phone number 205-339-4953. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Hey, Tide fans, when you're getting ready for this week's game, stock up on Golden Flake. Pick up your favorite bag of Golden Flake potato chips, tostados, or cheese puffs, and you'll be ready to tailgate like a true Tide fan. Golden Flake, the favorite chip of the Alabama Crimson Tide. The best choice you can make. Once in a while, a player comes along and completely changes the game. Unbelievable catch! It's no different when it comes to a car. A car that doesn't just change the game, but dominates it. 
the unrivaled 2015 Toyota Camry. Now lease a new 2015 Toyota Camry SE for $209 a month for 24 months. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid October 1st, November 3rd, 2014, 2628 to its signing. Camry SE was selected with a 250 disposition fee for qualified lessees. Excludes tax tag, registration title, and other fees cannot be mounted under offers. Game day brings out the best in all of us. Leadership, teamwork, tradition, spirit. These are the things we love about college athletics. They're also the values that drive the associates at Regents Bank to bring you the products, advice, and financial guidance you need to move life forward. Because at Regents, every day is game day. Regents, official bank of the SEC. Regents Bank, member FDIC. All right, guys, listen up. Before you step out into the night, I want you to designate a driver because great times don't happen without that guy. He's the guy who makes sure you don't act like an idiot in front of the cute girl across the room. He buys her a Budweiser and says it's from you. And then, at the end of the best night of your life, he makes sure you get her home safely. So raise high your butt for the hero of the night, the designated driver. Great times to wait. Good job, bud. Enjoy responsibly. Budweiser beer, anheuser Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. Gets the snap. Blake straight drop. Looks left. Takes off. Gets a few yards. Finds an open. Yeldon makes the grab of the three. He lunges forward. He is in. He held on to the ball. Touchdown, Alabama. Welcome back to the Nick Saban Show presented by Alpha Insurance. We're live at Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa. One of the two touchdowns that Blake Sims threw for on Saturday at uh, the University of Arkansas for the season now. Blake 101 of 149. 1,489 yards, 10 touchdowns, three interceptions. Allie LaForce, the CBS Sidelines reporter, is with us as our media guest. I know you've looked at tape of this football team, and you saw this team in action. Blake Sims, to me, has been the story of the season. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of questions coming in about Blake to start the season, and a lot of pressure, too. Yes. And, yes, exactly. And, and that's how the SEC has been, is who will be the next superstar to emerge. And no one knew coming into the season who that would be, but he's playing as though he's been the starter for multiple years. And, and it's amazing to me the maturity he has showed. Let's talk about, you said the SEC so pressure packed this year. You've seen two of the best over the course of the last two weeks. The guys over in Mississippi are for real, aren't they? They are for real. And you know what? M Mississippi State has a, has a quarterback who's really oh, yeah. surprising people too because he's so multifaceted and he, and he can be a running threat and he's throwing the ball accurately. and. And the biggest thing is when schools don't have a lot of success, how will they handle the success once they get it? And both teams are showing that they've been able to do that so far. So far. All right. The coach is back on stage. You get to open this quarter hour with a question. All right. Well, uh, you know, when you look at Texas A&M, they were a high-scoring team to start the season, too, and they're averaging 25 points a game the last two. Obviously, as you get into conference play, competition gets, gets greater as well. But looking at film, what did Mississippi State and Ole Miss do so well defensively against them? Well, I, I think the two things that, you know, both teams did is, you know, Ole Miss scored two touchdowns on defense, had a pick six for a touchdown, and picked up a fumble and ran it for a touchdown. All right, so I think in the last two games, the turnovers have been a real problem for Texas A&M. You know, at Mississippi State, they turned the ball over three times. So in both games that they struggled, you know, they had difficulty with turnovers. In all the games that they won, they didn't. All right, uh, they, they threw for a lot of yards. Uh, they made a lot of yards. And in both the games, they got behind early. So it kind of took them out of their game. You know, in our games in the past with them, uh, we've gotten behind early, and we've had to fight back in the games to, in one case, win, in one case, come up a little short. So I think it's really, really important that we get off to a good start in the game. And I think, you know, you have to have a good team win. I, I think that, you know, your team has to play well when you play teams like this because what Mississippi State and Ole Miss both did is they controlled the ball on offense, so Texas A&M didn't have it for 100 plays in the game. All right, so that makes a huge difference in terms of your defense. So you cut down on the number of possessions that they have. You get them out. You get out of some of these drives with turnovers, all right, and it makes a huge difference in terms of, you know, the way the game gets played. So uh, it's really going to be important for us to start fast, and we're going to have to finish in the game too because these guys came back on Arkansas. You know, they had a 14-point, Arkansas had a 14-point lead, chance to go ahead more than that. You know, and missed a field goal and got a penalty when they ran the ball to the one-yard line. 
And then AM came back and scored fast at the end of the game. They can score fast, so you have to keep playing against a team like this. You can never let up. We got a full house tonight at Bob's Victory Grill and a uh, young lady standing at the end of the bar who wants to ask a question. Tell us who you are, where you're from. Hey, Coach. My name is Kendra Sandlin. I'm from Florence, Alabama with Alpha Insurance. My question for you, do you think defending the likes of Bo Wallace and Clint Trickett have helped us as we prepare to face Kenny Hill this weekend or see a completely different type of quarterback? Well, I, I think that um, Kenny Hill is a very, very good quarterback, and I don't like to compare players, but in terms of style of offense, you know, there are some similarities to some of the things that Ole Miss does and even more similarities to what West Virginia does in terms of Texas A&M's offense. Their offensive coordinator was at West Virginia two years ago. So, you know, there's a lot of influence between this. Now, what we have played against a lot more teams like this this year, I mean, the most different thing we played against was last week. When we had to play against Arkansas and they had two backs in the backfield, our guys were like, what, what, what is this? What where, is where, it? Where did this come from? Because, <laughs> you know, we've been playing against spread teams, no huddle teams. Southern Miss was a lot like what A&M is in terms of spread four wideouts all the time and all that type of stuff. So we've actually played against this kind of offense a lot more this year than we'd ever had the opportunity to play against it before, just based on the way the schedule's been this year. Now, hopefully, you know, that experience will help our confidence and help us play better uh, and also helps your preparation because you have more carryover from the games when you practiced certain things before. All right. Good Thanks question. for the question. And by the way, come claim this uh, University Mall gift card. Uh, University Mall, West Alabama's best selection of stores, all under one roof. You'll enjoy shopping there. Let's go back to the Academy Sports and Outdoors hotline to Matt, who is in Cincinnati. You know, Allie's from Ohio. I wonder if Matt's an old boyfriend. Oh, jeez, I don't know no, about that. No, I never no, dated no, Matt. No, 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 not at all. Uh, Coach Bates, it's a great honor to talk to you, sir, and this is definitely something that's uh, come off my bucket list. My one question that I have today, can you talk at the mid-season point your evaluation of the maturation of Blake Sim? Well, you know, I thought Blake played really, really well early in the season, and I think that, you know, the last two games we played on the road, uh, you know, has been a little more difficult for him. Uh, and, you know, hopefully uh, he's going to be able to get back to focusing on, you know, doing the little things right and really taking what the defense gives and um, not forcing things. You know, we've had four passes in the last two games that we threw right to the other guys, and they dropped them all, all right? And, you know, those are the kinds of things that Blake did not do, did not do, you know, early in the season. Uh, and I, I think that the one thing that we have always had at the quarterback position here uh, in all the years that we've been here, regardless of who's been the quarterback, is they've always done a really good job of taking care of the ball. I mean, we, we've not thrown a lot of interceptions. We've not turned the ball over a lot from the quarterback position. Uh, and I think that's really, really important, and it'll be important for us uh, because eventually those things are going to get you and the turnovers will get you as well. So uh, hopefully we can get Blake kind of recentered on what he needs to do to just take what the defense gives, read his reads, make the throws. Don't worry about making too many big plays and have a little more patience as a player. And I think he'll get right back to where he was. All right, tonight's first question from the Nick Saban Joe Show blog at AL.com is from Blake in Huntsville. He says, Coach, given that we want to get as many touches for our best players, is there a chance that Amari Cooper gets an opportunity to return kickoffs? Well, you know, we have other guys that I think are very, very capable, you know, when it comes to returning kickoffs. Now, Amari would be a very good punt returner and kickoff returner. Uh, you know, but I, I think that really what it's always important to me, and I think it's important to team morale, you know, that a lot of guys are involved and have roles on the team. I think the more people that you have that have roles on the team, you know, the better your team morale is always going to be. And, you know, I mean, hey, it's just a basic fact of life, all right? And, and I'll ask the question, and I'll just be very blunt. Everybody in here thinks you're being cheated. You don't get enough credit at work. You don't get paid enough. I mean, everybody thinks they're getting cheated. The other guy gets more. Everybody thinks that. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, it's just natural, all right? So 
what about your football team? What about the players on the team? I mean, if one guy is doing everything, what, what about the other guys in their role in terms of how much they contribute, how they feel good about how they're contributing to the team and all that? And, and, I, and we have more skilled guys who are capable of making plays, and we want them to have the opportunity to do it. Uh, and I have confidence in them. We have confidence in them. Uh, and, you know, and those guys, look, believe me, Christian Jones has been returning punts. He was all SEC punt returner yep. last year. All right, he, he, we haven't been having a lot of success in punt returns. You know, we're playing against all this bulldog punt. I, I call it bulldog punt where they're all spread out. And we don't get a lot of good punts to return. The ball's kicked all over the place. All right, so he's getting frustrated that he doesn't get good balls to return, and he hasn't had an opportunity to return many balls. So what's he do? All right, puts on the cape, all right, and tries to dive in the pile and catch the ball in the bounce and we're 10 people around. Bad decision, bad judgment, all right, trying to force something, trying to make something happen that isn't there. That's what I was talking about before. So it's not that the player is not a good player, and it's not that he's not very capable, and I certainly have confidence in him. It's that he wants to make a play so bad, he's forcing things. And that's not, you don't make good decisions when you do that. So you got to take what they give you when you get the opportunity, take advantage of it. And we have a lot of players that I think can do that. And we want to feature all the players. And Coop has done a great job for us. Also, when you have one of the nation's top receivers, I would imagine you wouldn't want him risking any other further injury by doing the returns either. Does that have anything to do with it? Well, you know, we, we really try to promote the importance of all of our guys on our team playing on special teams. And Coop would be the first guy that would want to go back and return a punt or a kickoff if we ask him to do it. But I think if you ask a guy to do too many things, you certainly enhance his opportunities of getting injured. Now, DeAndre White, on the other hand, you know, he's been injured a lot too. You know, people don't we, – we have three guys besides the two running backs that are really explosive players. 17, who's not playing. Number two, who has missed half – more than half the time this season already. Uh, had a shoulder injury, missed two games, then come back and played against Florida. Got a toe injury in that game, didn't play hardly at all against Ole Miss. Played a little bit last week in the game. Probably be able to play more in this game. So it's important that all these guys can contribute. But DeAndre White is the best special teams player we have. Him and Landon Collins. Yeah. I mean, we don't put him on all the teams, and we have taken D. White off the teams because he's been injured. Uh, but he has a tremendous impact on special teams. But, you know, we really try to sell to our players. You know, Bill Belichick, who I used to work for, you know, people don't understand this, but they think you just make the team because you're a good player when you play in the NFL. He has roster spots on, on the team. Uh, here's the first running back. He doesn't really need to be a good special teams player. But the second running back on our team, whoever it is, has to be a good special teams player. We keep a third guy and a fullback, he has to be a good special teams player. Star receiver, maybe he doesn't have to be a good special teams player. All them other receivers we have, they, they got to be able to play on special teams. And sometimes guys make the team because of that, not necessarily being the best position player. I think everybody in the world thinks, okay, we just take the five best receivers and then we make them, put, just throw them out there on special teams. Well, if they don't have toughness and they can't tackle and they won't do a good job of it, you're not going to have very good teams. So, and that's a very important part of the game. So, like a guy like DeAndre White, I think it's going to be a real, you know, asset for him at the next level that he is such a good special teams player. Okay, we're at the half hour. We need to take a break right now. A reminder that uh, you should do game day right with the latest innovations from LG. From the kitchen to the living room, LG has you covered. Come check out the latest in LG innovations at your local Best Buy or online at bestbuy.com slash LG. It's all possible with LG. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Our friends at Total Sports Travel still have packages available for the upcoming Tennessee and LSU games. The trips feature two-night hotel stay plus motor coach and pregame party prior to the game. Book now online at totalsportstravel.com or call 888-367-8781. 
This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. For every four skilled tradesmen who retire from the construction industry, only one person is entering an apprenticeship program to take their place. So if you're interested in making a good living by working with your hands, a career in construction and a nice salary are squarely within your reach. Go Build Alabama is committed to educating young minds about the opportunities that come from mastering a skilled trade. To learn more, register at GoBuildAlabama.com today. Go Build Alabama and Roll Tide. You're listening to Guy Talk live from the Sport Clips Haircuts locker room. Caller, you're on the air. My girlfriend beat me playing one-on-one. Ooh, sounds like you need to hit up a Sport Clips for an awesome haircut experience and some quality man time. I don't know. My girlfriend always takes me to her salon. Nonsense. Be your own man and get a great haircut in a guy-friendly place from stylists who know what guys need. You may be right. Sure I'm right. Now grab your Y chromosome, get down to Sport Clips, and ask for the MVP. Sport Clips. It's good to be a guy. Looking for the ultimate tire for your performance luxury touring vehicle? Look no further than the new Ventus S1 Noble 2 from Hankook Tire. Packed with the latest design and compounding elements focused on maximizing efficient water evacuation, providing impressive wet handling and braking, increasing cornering grip, and improving winter condition traction. The Ventus S1 Noble 2 is the ideal balance of all season and ultra high performance. To see more of the Ventus S1 Noble 2, visit USA Tires in Decatur. Be one with it. Hankook Tires. Excuse me, sir. What's the best day of your life? Uh, my wedding day. Where would you rank going to the November 29th Alabama-Auburn game? Whoa, are you serious? Yeah, you and a guest would get two game tickets, VIP hospitality, pre-game sideline passes, and more, courtesy of your local Ford dealer. Best day ever! Just go to alabamasaturdays.com and enter the Rammer Jammer fan experience. Don't I hope my wife wasn't listening. Must be 18 years or older with a valid Alabama driver's license to enter. For details and complete rules, visit alabamasaturdays.com. Backs are in the eye. Jalston Fowler, the lead blocker. Here now Sims rolls right, throws back. Wide open to Andrew White. Touchdown, Alabama. Oh, my. White was lost by the defense. He came back, was wide open. Sims looking that way, found him and threw him a BB. It was the winning touchdown last week at the University of Arkansas. Welcome back to the Nick Saban Show, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. We're live at Bob's Victory Grill. And reminder again to you folks here that Terry Saban and our Tuscaloosa affiliates, 99-1 and the Bear, want to send you to the game Saturday for field suite tickets, access to the sidelines before the games, and even a parking pass. There are... Folks, Trey and Ben from 99.1 and the Bear are at a table here. They'll take your bids in a silent auction, or you can call 205-339-4953, and all of it benefits the good folks at Nick's Kids. Allie LaForce, our media guest. Allie, start this half hour with a question for the coach. Okay, Coach, as, as defenses get better, as they start to hone in more on Amari Cooper, how important is establishing that running game early? Well, I, I think that uh, we need to have balance in our offense, and I think that other receivers, um, you know, what people basically have been doing is rolling up whichever way, wherever he goes, and uh, it minimizes, you know, what he's able to do, uh, and what we can do with him. Uh, but we have other guys that are capable, and I think we have to show confidence in their ability to do it. But I also think if you can run the ball, because you cannot play – an eight-man front and do those types of things. So if you can run the ball, you, you also say that they can't play you that way. All right, so every team has to choose, are they going to play us in the shell-type coverage where we always can roll up to this guy, which is kind of what Ole Miss did, and we have to be able to run the ball uh, and throw it to other people. Or are we going to stop the run with an eight-man front, and now you really kind of open up what you can do outside in the passing game. So. Um, it's really important that we can run the ball. All right, a lot of fans here at Bob's Victor Gill, including a gentleman at the end of the bar who appears to be from Brent, Alabama. Rick, what's your question for the coach? Coach Saban, roll tide. Roll tide. Have you ever got a penalty during a game as a player or a coach? Yeah, you know, it's so long ago that I played, I can't remember, but um, I'm sure I did. <laughs> And as a coach, uh, I think that I can't remember, but I probably think I did too. Um, 
I used to be a little more volatile on the sidelines with the officials than what I am now. Uh, I, I try to sort of make them my friends, uh, not, 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 not in a way that created an advantage, but they really have a hard job, and they really try hard to do a good job. And, you know, I think sometimes when you're constantly on them, it affects their ability to do that. And I try to be a little more supportive uh, unless something just is really, really out of line, you know, and then it's kind of hard not to get upset about it. But uh, we really try to treat them with respect because they do have a hard job. For the most part, they do a very good job. And I think it's great that Steve Shaw is the guy who's kind of over all of them. And in the SEC, our officials are the very best, in my opinion, relative to you know, the experience that I've had with other conferences. And uh, I think it's, a, it's the commitment that, you know, Rogers made when he was the director and Steve Shaw now that he is. And, you know, I think it speaks volumes of Mike Slive in our league and how we try to do things the right way, regardless of what it is. All right, uh, let's go to the Academy Sports and Outdoors hotline to Cleveland, Tennessee, where Rex is on the line. Rex, roll tide. Roll tide. Hey, Rex, how you doing, buddy? Hey, coach. Uh, pretty good. Uh, I just marked the previous caller. It's an honor to talk to you. And all I wanted to say was thank you for being a coach at Alabama. I appreciate that, man. All right, roll tight, coach. Thank you. No question. <laughs> you know, Coach, there are some other guys here tonight who are proud you're here, too. They're from the Bridgeport, Pennsylvania, Bama Boosters Club. Johnny yeah, Nicola. I remember those guys. They're here great for their... Great seeing you guys again. Great to see them. Great to see them all the way around. All right. We've got uh, another question from a fan here at uh, Bob's Victory Grill. Go for it, sir. Robert Stilwell from Oxford, Alabama. Coach, with this being our only home game, Sanders are in between four road games. How important is it to build momentum this weekend going into the second half of the season? Well, you know, I think every game is important, and you hope that as you go through the season, your team builds confidence and momentum by the way you play. Uh, and I tell you what, it's been a month since we played a home game, and yep. we're certainly looking forward to playing at home. Uh, but one of the things that I always try to emphasize with the players, it's great to have the fans, it's great to have the enthusiasm, and that can have a tremendous impact on the game. But you got to make sure that it's the players in the stadium right, that's going to make a difference in the game. And don't just assume that because you're playing at home, you know, things are going to go your way. You have to make it happen in terms of how you play and what you do down in and down out. And it's going to be important that we do that for 60 minutes in this game. And then we've got another stretch where we go for – Two, two road games in a bye week, so we're going to be gone for a month again. So we really basically have one home game in almost a two-month period, which is just one of those things that happens on, on the schedule. But, you know, you have to be able to win on the road. You have to be able to overcome the adversity that playing on the road creates, whether it's noise, whether it's whatever it is. You know, the, the and, and I think our team – did that last week at Arkansas. We didn't do it very well at Ole Miss, uh, and hopefully we can build on that, and that we'll play a great game at home this week. I know we'll have a great stadium. I know our players are looking forward to it, and I know there'll be great enthusiasm and excitement. Thanks, Robert. Our second question from the Nick Saban Show blog at AL.com. You mentioned Commissioner Slive. Uh, Ricky and Fruithurst wants to get your thoughts on Commissioner Sly's retirement, and he says, if the timing was opportune, would you like to be a conference commissioner one day? You know, Miss Terry asked me that. And I, let me just say this. I, first of all, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mike Sly and what he's done for the SEC and our league. I, I was in this league before he came to the league when Roy Kramer was here, and I really like Roy Kramer and really appreciate all that he did to advance college football, uh, BCS. Now we have a playoff system. Uh, but Mike Slive has tremendous foresight, uh, and he has worked well with all the institutions and been very fair with everyone. Uh, I like the respect that he shows all of us in terms, how, in terms of how he's managed problems that we've had internally in our organizations as well as with our players. Uh, I just think he's done a tremendous job of promoting our conference 
uh, and elevating the standard in the conference. And I think because of that, the competition in the conference from top to bottom has gotten a lot better. Everybody says, hey, all the teams in the West are so good. Well, I think that's years of, of people elevating the standard, which, you know, elevates everybody else's programs as well because they get more money, they get more revenue, uh, they have better staffs, they have better coaches, they do a better job of recruiting. So everybody has resources. Uh, and I think it's made our league a tremendous league. And I think Mike's Live deserves a tremendous amount of credit for it. I hate to see him retire, to be in all honesty. Yep. I, but uh, I also understand the circumstances. Uh, but I think he'll have a tremendous impact on college football uh, because his presence is always going to be felt. Would you like to be a commissioner? No. No, okay. <laughs> Another fan here at Bob's Victory Grill with a question for the coach. Tell us who you are, where you're from, sir. Coy Callender from uh, Jacksonville, Alabama. Hey, Coach, uh, over the first six games, Reggie Ragland has developed into one of the key players for both defense and special teams. And uh, just, just would like to know what you foresee for him as we move ahead in 2014. Right. Well, you know, Reggie has really made a lot of improvement, you know, from the beginning of the season till now. And I think it's a great example of how much knowledge and experience and playing really helps guys develop. You know, you can only develop so much until you get out there and you actually do it. And you make some mistakes and you get corrected and you understand the importance of preparation and doing things the right way uh, all the time. So Reggie has really, really played well for us. He's been one of the most productive players in several games this year. He's very athletic. He's got great size. And uh, he's becoming more and more confident and instinctive as a player because he's becoming more accustomed to the position that he plays. You know, when he came, he was really an outside linebacker that we really kind of made an inside linebacker. All right, so, and he's really developed nicely at that and, and has really played very, very well for us, very by, well. And by the way, we've got, for that question, you're going to get a tailgate banner from Banner Stadium. Check them out online at bannerstadium.com. And Coach Reggie's also one of your great special teams players too, isn't he? Really, really good on special teams. You know, he and Landon Collins are both really good special teams players. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I think have hurt us on special teams. You know, we made a decision early in the season, before the season even started, you know, playing against all these no huddle teams. We were really going to put an emphasis on playing more different players on special teams. And some of those players are relatively inexperienced. I mean, at one time we had three or four freshmen running down on the kickoff team, for example. And, you know, we just found out that, you know, these guys are not ready. They don't have the experience. And we're going to have to ask more of our veteran players to play more on special teams, uh, even though we're playing a lot of plays in the game because of the no huddle and the fast-paced offenses that we play, that it really didn't matter. And the players bought in, and we're glad to do it. And Reggie and, and Landon are both guys that have, you know, contributed in that way not just defensively, but really well on special teams. Two great ones. Well, we've got a few more questions for the coach, but one final break. Let's take it right now by telling you this is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm going to let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. So, who's going to do what? Flashlights? Nowhere to be found. Emergency supply kits? Not packed. What about blankets? We have an old towel. Cell phones? May not work. Emergency water? Not a drop. Perfect. We all know where we're meeting if we're separated. The library. Oh, Jones House. The bus stop. And I'll be waiting here wondering where you all are. Great. It sounds like we don't have a plan. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. On the next episode of Recipes for Disaster. I'm making beef sliders for my friend Sammy. Nana taught me to always pull meat off the grill early so it's extra juicy. <laughs> 
Use a food thermometer to ensure ground beef is 160 degrees, or you could make people really sick. Sandy didn't think twice about the slider she ate until yoga class, when a nasty case of food poisoning turned her downward-facing dog into upward-moving lunch. Watch Recipes for Disaster at foodsafety.gov and learn the steps Maria unwittingly leaves out. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Shotgun snap, stands in, here comes pressure, he rolls right, goes back across the field, it is tipped and Alabama's got it, intercepted by Landon Collins, he tipped it, held on to it, and the Crimson Tide intercepts it for their first pick of the day, their third of the season. A terrific play by Landon Collins that sealed it for the Crimson Tide last Saturday at the University of Arkansas. Welcome back to the Nick Saban Show, presented by Alpha Insurance. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. We're live at Bob's Victory Grill here in T-Town, and you folks here at Bob's have just a few more minutes to uh, bid on those field suite tickets for the Texas A&M game this Saturday. And uh, the, uh, the guys from our Tuscaloosa affiliates, 99-1 Tide and the Bear 95-3, Trey and Ben are here to take your bids. And, if you want to call in, you can call 205-339-4953. Coach Saban rejoining us here on stage. And, Coach, we just played back that, uh, that interception by Landon Collins, and I think it's, it's uh, evidence of his athleticism. He, uh, the receiver had gotten behind it, but he managed to get back there and find a way to pick it off. Yeah, it was actually a running back, and, you know, the, the quarterback scrambled all the way across the field, and he had the guy, his guy covered, and... He kind of looked up to see where the quarterback was going, and the guy took off running, and he just kind of ran him down. And, yeah. of course, the ball was in the air a long time because he threw it all the way across the field. So uh, it was a great play, though, and Landon's played extremely well for us all year and has really been a good leader for us as well. So uh, his presence is, is, is an impact that we, you know, really uh, have benefited from. Before we get to our final question from Allie, let me ask uh, Kenny Hill, obviously doing a great job as the quarterback at Texas A&M, but the Aggies have a bunch of good receivers, don't they? Well, they really have good backs. They have good receivers. They've really got a good offensive line. They probably have a first-round you know, left tackle, which they've had three years in a row now that we've played them, uh, and really good receiving core and uh, different types of guys, too. You know, some long guys, uh, some quick guys, some bigger guys that are physical blockers, um, uh, really good runners. I, I think one of the most difficult things about playing a, a team like this is you are so spread out, and they've got their five guys in the running back, and if you can't stop the run with five guys in the box because you're so spread out, you know, it makes it very, very difficult to play the game. And um, it's going to be very important that our front guys do a really good job in that part of the game because that can limit, you know, what we do on defense. If we have to keep adding a guy in the box, we're, we're going to be opening up, getting the ball thrown outside and deep on us. And uh, Kenny Hill obviously has uh, got some incredible numbers this year, but he's not the same style quarterback as Johnny Manziel, is he? Well, he really is a good athlete, and he really can run. And I think he's run seven or eight times on third down to convert third downs in, in our breakdown games, which uh, Johnny Manziel was really good at scrambling to extend plays yeah. and throw the ball. Uh, he could also run it, and he was very fast. But, you know, Kenny is really, really a good athlete, uh, and he's really a good quarterback, probably the best quarterback we've played against all year. So it's going to be a real challenge for us in the back end. But, you know, when you play against guys like this, it's really a team thing. It's how, how can you rush? How can you affect the guy in the pocket? How can you disguise? How do you cover? How do you tackle? I mean, there's so many things involved. It's not just really the secondary. It's the whole defensive team when you play a team like this. Read and run pass. I mean, that, that's going to be critical in the game. Allie, you get the final question for the, the coach. final question. I, I'm just curious. You mentioned earlier in the show that – the SEC has gotten tougher from the bottom up because of changes over time. How has that affected recruiting in the conference? Well, you know, I think everybody's recruited well. When you look at 
I, I don't really pay a lot of or put a lot of stock into recruiting services, five-star, four-star. I mean, it creates a lot of interest, which is good for the players. Uh, but, you know, it's not always about accurate evaluation. So I don't think those rankings really indicate how well people recruit. But at the same time, I think if you get acknowledged that you're recruiting well, and Ole Miss had one of the best recruiting classes in the country a couple of years ago, and, you know, four or five of those guys in that class are fantastic players for them, you know, right now. And, uh, you know, Mississippi State has done a good job of recruiting, you know, all along. LSU always does a really good job of recruiting. You know, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee. I mean, everybody in our conference really does and works hard at recruiting. I mean, it's, it's the lifeblood of the program is to get good players. And, um, you know, we've certainly had our share of good players. Uh, we've had a lot of players go out early for the draft, which is a good thing. Uh, but it also makes it tougher to replace those guys. And you lose senior leadership. You know, guys that would be seniors that would be great leaders on your team this year aren't present because they went out early for the draft. So you constantly feel like you have a young team and you don't have a lot of seniors on your team, which sometimes affects, you know, the, the whole maturity of the team and the leadership of the team. So, you know, we've all got our issues and problems. I'd, I'd like to have all these guys that can go out early for the draft. They play really well for us and I'm happy for them and I think it's a good thing. But it's also a management, you know, team management problem gets created a little bit around that as well. How often do you go out to see a player at practice in the recruiting trail and it's the guy going up against him in practice every single day that you find out is equally as good as an athlete, maybe just not as much recognition? Right. Well, one of the things that I really, really dislike uh, and have voiced that I dislike is uh, several years ago, they took the head coaches off the road in the spring when you can spring recruit. And that's really when you can evaluate players because everybody's in spring practice. All right, so I used to go out as a head coach every day, and I would see five or six guys practice. And it made it so much easier for me to make good decisions and evaluations about what players we recruited because you weren't just watching them on film, and it was lots of times you were amazed at the difference at what the guy looked like on film and what he looked like in person all right, when you saw him competing. Uh, I can't do, we can't do that anymore. Now, they changed the rule because Urban Meyer and myself were the guys that went out all the time, and I guess other head coaches didn't want to go out all the time. But I really do think it really helped us build the program here because we made a lot of good decisions on a lot of players uh, that, because we could do a good job of evaluating them. Now I think you have to make these decisions so early you really don't have a chance to evaluate them because they want them to get offered when they're juniors. You haven't really ever seen them play, and in some cases you've never even met them or seen them. So it makes it more difficult. Uh, and a lot of guys get re recruited on reputation. Uh, we don't like to recruit that way. We like to evaluate players just like we did for the draft when we are in the NFL. Allie LaForce, thanks for being here tonight. Have a good telecast Saturday. Thanks so much for having me. All right, you Coach. Know, I'd just like to make one comment. You know, Heather Moore's here and her family's here tonight. And, you know, Coach Moore was, uh, brought me here uh, and was my best friend. Uh, and certainly best colleague in terms of all that he did to contribute to, you know, building the program, building the facilities. You know, his legacy here is, you know, something that maybe only Bear Bryant can match in terms of, you know, the time and uh, all that he did to uh, help the University of Alabama be successful. And uh, I know, I'm sure a lot of you out there miss him as much as I do. All right, uh, you get the final word presented by Mercedes-Benz. Well, you know, this is no doubt, you know, a good team that's coming in here to play us, and they're going to be no huddle, and they're going to be fast, and uh, it's a big game for our team. And, you know, I'd really like to see great support. We had a great stadium when we played Florida. I think it really, you know, ignited and, and helped our players emotionally, and I think it's going to be very, very important that we have the same kind of atmosphere in this game. I think, you know, they're going to use hand signals as much as they can, but... The more we can make it difficult for their offense to communicate, the better it's going to help our defensive players. And uh, we actually, we're ready for you because we practice noise today with the defense, not the offense, Great. with the defense. So you yell when they have the ball, all right, and our defensive players practice noise today so they could communicate so that we, we affect them. But, you know, our, our, I, I tell you what, I, I, I really am excited about the team that we have. You know, when we started this year, I think people need to understand. I said, 
we came here, we stayed here to start a, we, we came here to start a program, we stayed here all right, to restart a program right, and build, rebuild the program based on all the principles and values that made us successful in the past. And, you know, this team has worked very, very hard to develop. And I know sometimes the reality of this team hasn't met everybody's expectations. But that doesn't mean they haven't worked hard. It doesn't mean that they're not really good, you know, young men who need your support. They need your help. They don't need to be criticized. All right, they need to play with confidence. And what did I say earlier? You've got to let them run. All right, and they're going to grow up for you, and you're going to be proud of them. But you've got to give them a chance to grow up. So thank you, and Roll Tide. Thank you, Coach Roll Tide. This is the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Man, do I love card night. You ready, boys? You got a king? Go fish that. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Titus O'Neil. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. You see me around the neighborhood and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me. We are Feeding America, brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. To a single ember from a wildfire, the branches hanging over your roof look like big matchsticks and the dry leaves and twigs in your gutter are perfect kindling. Some fire hazards aren't clearly marked and can impact your neighbors. Learn to spot them. Your home is better protected from wildfire when your whole community is prepared. Visit fireadapted.org for tips to get started. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Man, last night we put on an epic light show. So epic. The crowd loved us. Wait, there are only four people out there. Yeah, but did you see their four faces? Their eyes lit up brighter than ours, and we're fireflies. Yeah, we are. And we're going to be out here rocking out our light show at a forest near you. So come check us out. Check us out. Whether you're rocking their world or they're rocking yours, some memories never fade. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Be the hero of your tailgate this season. Go to eatatjax.com to place your order for the ultimate fan fuel. Get your team ready for the big game with Jack's delicious hand-breaded chicken fingers, fried chicken, sides, biscuits, and more. Jack's now a proud partner of the Crimson Tide. Now let's talk about sport clips. You're a guy, and when you need a haircut, you need it right now. So come on in, because at Sport Clips, you never need an appointment. Visit any of our Alabama stores and ask for the MVP service. Sport Clips, it's good to be a guy. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics, noting the remarkable efforts of student athletes and their institutions. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook. Find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Hey Coach of the Nick Saban Show until Saturday morning at 11.30. Roll Tide, everybody. Live from Bob's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa, this has been Hey Coach, presented by Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Also brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coke taste, zero calories. Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. Your Alabama Ford dealers, Alabama Saturdays, built Ford tough. And by Golden Flake, the official chip of the Crimson Tide. The priest.